and we're live. So this is a group of four people using Google Plus Hangouts as a broadcast tool for the first time. And I'm Bo Adams. I am the Director of Educational Innovation at Unboundary in Atlanta, Georgia. And we have three other people gathered here. Aaron? Uh, my name is Aaron Baldridge, and I teach AP Environmental Science and a course I created called Gifted and Talented Independent Study Mentorship at the Science and Engineering Magnet in Dallas, Texas. My name is Grant Lichtman. I'm on sabbatical from Francis Parker School in San Diego, and I've just completed a three-month uh, road trip around the country visiting 60-plus schools to study uh, schools of the future and school innovation. And I'm Jill Goff, the Director of Teaching and Learning at Trinity School in Atlanta, Georgia. And the reason we're gathered, uh, Jill Goff and I co-created and co-facilitated a course for eighth graders called Synergy. It was a community issues problem solving class at the Westminster Schools in Atlanta, Georgia. And facilitated that course for three semesters over two years. And it was largely based on a book that Grant Lickman wrote called The Falconer, What We Wished We Had Learned in School. And a lot of the through lines of that course were based on uh, Mr. Usher, uh, one of the lead characters in that book, um, and how he organized his course for real life learning. And Grant and Aaron uh, got to know each other. And Aaron has created uh, a course somewhat similar to Synergy, certainly related. Um, this science, technology, engineering, mathematics, magnet school course um, with mentoring and uh, got us together, I guess, in August. Is that right, Aaron? Yeah. Got us all together in August to talk about uh, this new venture of his. And over uh, into December, asked us all to kind of regather to continue thinking through together the idea of. Uh, these courses uh, for students that uh, blur the line some between school and real life. So Aaron, I think, had some questions to ask, and we'll let the conversation steer from there. Yeah. So I guess my first question for you guys is, I, I'm about to get into the projects with the students, and I'm wondering I'm wondering if there's a way to make it so that it doesn't sound like a project. So I, I even think the word project is tough for them sometimes. Where I'm saying like, hey, let's embark on a project. And for them, that means they're going to have a piece of poster board and they're going to put some drawings on it and they're going to stand up and talk about it. Um, and, and that's kind of their idea of a project rather than something that's a little more advanced or, or in-depth. Um, so was there a way that you guys kind of facilitated that or used certain language to guide that? Jill, you want to start? So I, I think it was more, we talked about uh, problem finding and problem solving and what we wanted kids to do and what did they want to do. And it was not necessarily framed as a project, but this is a problem that they found and what did they want to do about it. Um, and that we had them rapid prototype talking to each other about it so that about once a week we about once a week we had them just report out here's what we're thinking here's what we're doing and got feedback from everybody else in the room so that they had uh, feedback to hone their thinking and their work instead of making it a project it was just about really solving a community problem. What do you think, okay. Ben? Well, I'll try to do a good job of responding. I was distracted by all the Grant Lickmans <laughs> popping up on my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I There's didn't know what to do two. with that either. <laughs> There's still you, two Grants. Are you still with us, Grant? See, I think he's frozen uh -huh. and is trying to rejoin. Okay. Uh, okay. So let's hang on for a second. He says he got knocked out. <laughs> hey, Aaron, while we're yeah. waiting on Grant, I'm going to be in Dallas next weekend, but I'm coming okay. back to Dallas. I think it's February the 8th. 
and I think I could arrange to come in early and come to school if you still want adults to come talk to your kids. Definitely. Um, ah. Are you are you thinking you would come this first time or the second time? The second time. I've already made my okay. flight for this first time, but I have okay. not made my flight for February the eighth. Usually okay. I land about six seven o'clock at night, but I think I could come in in the morning. If yeah, it's it. That would be tough. Both of my classes are in the morning. Okay. So that might be difficult to do. Um, okay. But uh, but thanks for that offer. Sure. Yeah, yeah. That that would have been awesome. It would have been it would have been interesting for you to to kind of for me to hear you and see you do that, but yeah. also for for my students to kind of see that other people are doing this type of thinking, this type of schooling. Well, I um, TI pretty much lets me do whatever I want to do, so I can ask them if they'll bring me in a day early if you want me to come. Well, if, I, I mean, think I would, about it. You don't have to give me an answer right this second, but yeah, I would. I, I always, you know, I've I've found more and more that the the more diversity I have come into my classroom, mm -hmm. the more different students benefit from that. Yeah. Okay. So. So. I'll work on that and see, because it would be an early class, like. Eight seven thirty? How early? Um, they start at nine fifteen. Oh, okay. Yeah. Half, half my day's over by nine fifteen. <laughs> so. What do you think, Bo? Crane, are you back with us? Sorry, right, I've been texting him. Uh, for those people that might be watching the live or recorded broadcast, uh, bless you. But we're experimenting, <laughs> and I think that's part of. You should try a different browser. Um. So, Jill, you said you said one more thing. Let me just make sure I, I got that right. You said problem finding and solving, and then you said something about that afterwards about what they're doing with that. Right. What was it that you said? Well, you know, if you I, I we watched our kids have solutions and start looking for problems to solve instead yeah. of finding a problem first and then doing interviews to figure out if it really was a problem in the community and what the community saw would be some possible solutions. Like we had children that wanted to do an urban garden, but when they went to interview the people in the area where they wanted to set up an urban garden, they learned that they didn't need another urban garden, they needed jobs. And it transformed that kids that set of kids' work into creating a job fair to help members of the community find work. Mm. Um, but what we watched a lot was kid, kids would create a solution and then go find the problem that it might solve, as opposed to identifying what they thought might be a problem and then talking in the community about, is this a problem or is it just something we've observed? And how might we work on this with you? And so it, it was not really about, I want to work on literacy of third graders, because we don't right. know whether our third graders need help with their literacy. Right. I'm, it might be that I want to work with third graders, and this set of teachers reports that their students are having trouble. But it's more about finding and identifying problems interviewing people in the community and then working together. Um, so then if, let's say the students decide to do something that is, um, that's new, like let's, mm -hmm. you know, I, I have a, a few kids who are pretty excited about writing a memoir about um, first generation um, Immigrants in the United States, and 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 this the spe the specificity of it is that those kids are they're here illegally, mm. and so they really wanted to kind of write down their stories and compile them. That's great. Yeah, and yeah, well, that, and that's what I said too. I was really excited about it, but that doesn't kind of fall under the realm of solving a problem, you know. Well, let's think about that. Bo is always good at this. So, uh, well, I'm I'm so sorry. I'm distracted. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out how to help Grant get back okay. in here. Uh, well, I'll just keep. To, I'll just channel you. 
So it could be a problem because it could be about feeling like a member of the community and how to engage and feel like you belong in a community where you're considered illegal or different. And it could be about that. That could okay. be the problem that you're working on is how to, how to become a member of a new community, which that happens to lots of people. Right. And how to feel like you belong when everything that's coming at you says you might not. Right. Um, so do you kind of turn everything into something like that? So it's almost like a statement of intent? Um, yes. So I'm going to tune back in okay. here. Um, again, sorry for the distraction. Um, I think... Well, I definitely think Jill's right, so that'll keep me out of trouble. But there you I go. genuinely think she's right. I think you want to use a broad term definition of problem. Right. Um, so I, you know, I think. Um, will you say again what it is that this the student is it a student or a group of students that are interested in? Uh, it's a, into? It's, it was one student who initially started it. She was she was talking about interviewing all of the people at the, our school who are seniors that are there um, illegally. Yes, I think that's an incredible project. And yeah. so I, I kind of guided her to say, well, maybe you should include some of these other people that are in this class and write down your stories and maybe go and interview just one person and write down their story. So it's almost like a memoir of here's my story and here's somebody's story that I interviewed and compile those. Yeah, I, and I think there are uh, myriad ways to go about that. It's, and I definitely think that's a project a problem worth addressing, digging into. It sounds like some of the first part of that is uh, great learning in that they haven't predefined the problem, that they're actually going to do a discovery phase and uh, ethnography um, of what do some of the community members think about um, being considered illegal while being a member of the school. Uh, so the, to me that's an interesting juxtaposition of feeling a part of the community while at the same time simultaneously feeling disenfranchised from your community. Um, and through those interviews and discoveries and ethnographies the problem quote unquote might reveal itself um, which path to pursue is that a, a public awareness campaign about what it means to be uh, an illegal member of the community um, mm -hmm. because of immigration status or is that a um, advocacy plan for how to quicken and enhance the becoming legal process for current students um, in schools um, but I, I admire that they haven't already identified a problem before starting the um, immersion discovery ethnography process. I think Jill and I wrestled with that a lot with our Synergy students, that they oftentimes mm -hmm. knew the problem that they wanted to deal with before they had actually done any sort of community canvassing. Interesting. And uh, I think Jill and I used to talk about they they've come with a solution looking for a problem. He really wasn't listening, was he? I uh, know. I wasn't. Okay. I was trying to help Grant back in. That's okay. It's really important to repeat stuff too, so keep going because it just makes me sound smarter. Yep, and see I'm worried about Grant feeling disenfranchised I, right I'm, now. So. I'm working with Grant while you're, you're talking. Go ahead. So have you figured out how to add him back? Um, we're working on it. I'm trying a different browser. So go ahead. Okay, and I'm sending him another invitation to, I think, the right account. And it, Aaron, how did how did the students even get to where that student is? I mean, how did they um, declare and broadcast that that's what they want to work on? So you, I are you smiling because you've already said that too? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> it's okay, Aaron. He does this to me all the time. 
<laughs> no, no, not at all. Um, I was, you, you know, I I picked up, I picked up quite a few different ways to do projects. Yeah. Um, so one of the one of the ways that I I kind of picked up was um, the it was it's called design thinking for teachers, I believe. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of this toolkit for um, walking through some type of um, design thinking. Mm -hmm. And so I told the students, this was kind of this last part of the year when I had people coming in and talking, kind of whenever I would have days, I would say, hey, we're going to walk through one more step of what this kind of project might look like. And so we started off with, you know, the discovery phase, and then I think it goes to ideation, and then it goes to exploration, and then it goes to um, something else, and then prototype. I, I forget what the order is, but there's five kind of big main steps. Yeah. Um, and, and then in, embedded in that, there's 12 steps uh, within those. And so we kind of walked through some of that, and at the beginning of it, I had a little more time, um, so I kind of got them thinking like, you know, we did a little bit where we wrote down some ideas for projects, and that's kind of what I told them to do. Just like, hey, write down. You know, if you have multiple ideas, just write down a bunch of project ideas on post-it notes, and we stuck them up on the wall. Mm -hmm. And so, kind of everybody got to see those. Some of them were awesome. Some of them were terrible. Some of them were weird. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and so, so you know, from that, I think that kind of got them thinking about. What, what they really wanted to do and and I think initially this girl had said something like I don't I don't even know she wanted to do like an event planning thing um, she yeah. kinda wanted to learn about event planning and then she I, you know I think I said something like you know you should really this should kind of come out of who you are it shouldn't be something and maybe this is this is this you know coming with a solution kinda thing I said this should come out of who you are um, as as a problem that you see for yourself you know, this should come out from not, it shouldn't just be like, oh, I want to do this extra project. It should be, this is what I do in my daily life, or this is who I am. What what comes out of that? Like, what 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 can I do, and, and if I have an hour and a half every other day, what? how can I take advantage of that time to do this thing that I've been thinking about, or that I love, or that I think I'm passionate about? Yeah, and I... I think that's great. The uh, so a, a number of things come to mind. One is part of the reason Jill and I named the course Synergy is because we we felt like part of our jobs as facilitators were to help the student learners find places for synergy. So um, for for your student, that might look like they they have a an interest for whatever reason in event planning. They uh, think it would be. Um, interesting and valuable to um, interview some of the students who have illegal immigration status and yet are still members of the school community. There might be a confluence of those two things that through the interview process, through the discovery process, it might turn out that what would uh, empower the community best is an event. Um, mm -hmm. I almost think of some event videos that I've seen of sessions where students kind of stand up together around different issues and realize that they're not alone, that there's a whole community a tribe of sorts with them uh, for whatever issue and that there's this amazing power in realizing that, oh my gosh, I, I figured I was the only one uh, who had this issue and now I see that there are a hundred other people and I know 20 of them already really well um, mm -hmm. for a support network, for understanding myself and my connection to the community better. And maybe that does look like some sort of community event. I know that um, at Westminster we had a, uh, an event called, I think it started as Everybody Eats Rice, yeah. um, that rice is a dish served in every culture. And, and that was a way of bringing people together about something that made them similar and alike rather than different. But amazingly, what really got discussed at a lot of those events is the differences in culture and appreciation for what makes us different. Mm -hmm. And, and it, we tried hard not to steer the student learners towards those things that we thought were cool, but to help uh, provide a, a, an opportunity and an environment where they could discover those things. And, mm -hmm. And I'll speak for myself, you know, if I had to do it all over again, 
I would do some things very similar and some things different because I don't know that I always did a good job. And sometimes I was overly involved in suggesting things. And then the students, I think, were wrestling with, well, is this something my teacher wants me to do? And oh, this, yeah. this particular teacher is also my principal, so does that mean I have to do it this way? Um, which is part of the reason why we made the course non-graded, so there at least wouldn't be that pressure. Right. Yeah, I kind of I kind of feel that now. I I've really been backing away from offering up any kind of suggestion, and, and and I you know sometimes that means that we sit in that room in silence for a few minutes um, while they kind of sit there and think about things. Um, yeah. But I don't. And, and 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 it's only now that they've started to come with ideas to me that I'll say something like, "Oh, that's a great idea. Have you thought about this?" Um, yeah. And, and just kind of like, just to kind of get their wheels turning and and start thinking like, "Oh, these are some other things that I might be able to do." So, Aaron, I wanted to tell you that we had in our last synergy class a group of kids that were interested in um, advertising, and that's what they wanted to do. And they served all of the other teams as the ad campaign and advertising group. So the children who had solutions or activities planned and they needed to get the information out, the ad campaign team, they had a great name. I can't think of it right at the moment. Um, on, on air. On air. They took over and did the communication for the other teams. So they built a video commercial for um, Carpool to School Day. They um, helped to create the flyers for the job fair. They did that kind of work. Um, so they, they could, even, like, for mine at the end of the year, if the students are wanting to present, they could even do something like get the people, do kind of the paperwork for the people to come and sit in and hear these presentations instead of the, the group themselves doing that. Right. I mean, That's interesting. It, Say that again, Aaron. What so the was your summary of that. The 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 advertising group would would kind of do the the work behind to get people aware of these other projects that are going on. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, That's they, really, they, that's they really saw cool. their they saw their problem to be solved as that lack of awareness or lack of communication unless yeah, they provided that service. Yeah. I, I feel like some of the students are going to feel overwhelmed near the end of the year when they've done this great project and now they have to try and get people to come in and hear them speak. Whereas if there's a yeah. group kind of facilitating that the whole way through, then there was no pressure. It's just, hey, work on your thing and we'll kind of get these people and make sure that they're there and kind of do the, the legwork behind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, that's a great idea. I didn't even think about that. So it could be, that could be like your event planner person. If right. they're interested in, the event could be that we're having a community TED-like talk where our projects are going to be presented and we're going to have people invited in to have, uh, to give feedback and to listen and we're going to have coffee and a light dinner and dessert as we break up those talks. You know, it mm. could be a major event. Yeah. That they, they help execute. Can we take a brief pause? Grant, can you hear us? He just texted me. Um, could we consider stopping the video to see if we can hear him? Yeah, yeah let's end the broadcast okay. and then we can always start back up. And I imagine we'll be better the second time than we were the first time. I can't, shows, I can't redo all that again. <laughs> no, no, no. Just the, just the technical part of it, yeah. <laughs> uh, which is learning. People can actually That's watch right. us learning. <laughs> all right.